Hello everyone, welcome to my how to Minecraft series, this, te this series where I teach you how to do things in Minecraft. In today's episode, we'll be talking about redstone. Uh, so, people, you probably watch redstone videos on how to do it, but you probably never understood it, and you probably want to understand redstone so you can make your own contraptions. So, in this video, I'll be going the basics of every redstone block in the game. Uh, to be specific, we'll be going over the redstone blocks in the redstone section over here. To be more specific, these are all the items we're going to be going over in this video. So to be exact, we're going to be going over three sections of redstone. Now, just to be clear, we will not be going over the comparator. Uh, if you want to see the comparator, there are going to be a card in the top uh, right or left corner of the video. Um, but we'll be covering everything else. So we're going to be going over five sections. Normal activators other activators so there's normal activators things normally activate and other like unique activators we have activations which are the things the activators can activate a lot of activate we have other redstone just other redstone related things and special piston things we'll get to that in a minute so let's go one by one to each redstone thing we're going to start off with the redstone itself now if you don't know what redstone is it's a little trail over here it connects um activators to activations so you can perform actions so here we have, this is how it looks like in the, your hand. Um, and it can go up one block and down one block. It can travel both ways, depending on which way you're sending the signal. Next, we have the pressure plate. So we have a pressure plate over here. Now you see, when I stand on it, it gives a redstone signal. Now, pressure plate has a frequency of 15, which means the redstone can travel 15 blocks before it doesn't, before it doesn't give a signal anymore. And then we have an iron and gold pressure plate, which only gives out a signal of 1. Now, the more weight you put onto this iron pressure plate, for example, more items and things like that, the more, uh, the more longer the frequency is going to get. Like, for example, if I put the pressure plate itself onto it, you see, it gives out a frequency of 1. And then if I put another one, maybe... Over here, you see, well, maybe you need more, but you, that's how it works. Next, we're going to go to the button. Now, there are wood buttons, stone buttons, but they all work the same. So, buttons, when you press on them, for, they will give out a signal uh, for uh, for about a second, and then they will stop. Uh, this gives, like, a temporary signal. Uh, so, yeah, it can also travel through walls like this, but only one block walls. So, yeah, that's how buttons work next we have the lever so the lever gives out a permanent signal until you flip it flip it again uh, and one like the button it could also travel through walls one blocks walls next we have the redstone torch now the redstone torch is a permanent uh activator it has a frequency of 15 uh and it's just like if you need something to be permanently on now redstone torches can also be used like this to invert a signal so for example over here it's, it goes through and then this redstone torch is off and so this is how you can invert the signal like if you need a piston to be on uh, by default here we could see it in action over here so you see the redstone torch is over here this is on we turned off turns on so that's how you can invert the signal redstone torches can also be used to uh, send signals upwards so you see it's it has over here one and then off and then on and then if we destroy this one you see it goes on and then off Next we have is the redstone block. Now the redstone block also has a frequency of 15. Uh, it's a permanent activator, just like the redstone torch. Pause. You see that redstone torch? Well, the redstone torch said if you don't subscribe right now, it will replace all your torches with its redstone torch brethren. Now back to the video. Um, the only difference is a block, so it could be used with like pistons and things like that. Next, we're going to talk about the target block. So the target block, when you take a bow or a crossbow and you shoot the target block, it will send out a, a redstone signal almost as long as the button. Now, the more accurate you are, the, the stronger the signal. You see, that wasn't as strong. It didn't travel as far. But if I be a little more accurate over there, you see it travels further. Uh, so let's say I go to like the top corner. You see, it gave it like only four. So the frequency depends on how, how well your skills are shooting. Then next we have the trap chest. Now the trap chest, so this is a normal chest over here, a normal chest. And the trap chest works like a normal chest, except it gives it a redstone signal. So you see, we go over here, 
uh, and you see that redstone lamp over here turns on and you turn it off so it has a frequency of one uh, as you can see it turned on this redstone lamp but not this one so th this could be used for traps to trick your friends like if they open a the chest like hey I got you a gift and then they open it, and then they just fall into lava uh, you could tell the difference between a chest and a trap chest by the little rim around the iron so uh, professional minecraft players might not fall for it but uh, you can try next over here is we have the tripwire hook now the tripwire hook a little easier to trick your friends with than the trap chest where you have the, the tripwire over here and here you have string over here uh, and with and when you walk over it bit, it sends out a redstone signal so as long as you're on it it sends out a redstone wow. signal uh, but once you're off it then it stops uh, you need two tripwires that are connected with wires in order for it to work they don't both have to be giving redstone signal as you can see, that one isn't, that one isn't, but they both have to be together. Now, just to tell the difference with, tri no, with tw uh, tripwire hooks, this is a tripwire hook when it's not connected to any string. This is a tripwire hook when it's connected to string. And this is a tripwire hook when it's activated. Next, we're going to talk about the observer. Now, the observer sends out a redstone signal whenever the block in front of it is activated. So you could tell which is the front by the little face over here. And in the back, it shows the little redstone thing. So if the block in front of it changes in any way, so we place a block, you see it sends out a redstone signal. It's like half a second long. We destroy it, redstone signal. So you could do this for a lot of things. Let's say a tree grows, it detects it. Let's say bamboo, like some sugar cane grows, whatever. whatever. If the block in front of it changes in any way, then it activates. Next, we have the daylight sensor. Now, the daylight sensor, it gives, it gives out a permanent redstone signal depending on the time of day. So right now it's set to nighttime. So once it becomes nighttime, then then it will turn on. But if we right click it over here, now it's on when it's daytime. So if we do slash set slash time set night, so now it's nighttime. You see it's off, but it's close to morning. So it gives a small redstone signal over here. But if we do night, then it gives out a stronger redstone signal. Next, we're going to be talking about the lightning rod. Now, the lightning rod is a new 1.17 feature, but it, it also gives a redstone signal. So, when thunder strikes to it, then it will turn on the redstone lamp. So, if we do slash weather thunder, so now it's going to be thundering, and you're going to see that it will, it will turn on the redstone lamp when it uh, shocks. 2,000 years later. As you can see right there, it turned on the redstone lamp when it, it struck to show. So you could use that for redstone signals. I don't know why, why would you want to use that specifically, but it could be useful. Next, we're going to be talking about the lectern. Now, the lectern is usually used to hold a book that you could read it, but it could also send out a redstone signal. As you probably saw there, the redstone lamp turned on. So every time you turn a page, it, it, it sends out a redstone signal, but every page that you go, it sends out a stronger signal. So, for example, here on page 1, it gives out 5, and then 6, and then 7, 8, 9, and so on and so forth. Depending on how many pages you have in your book. Next, we're going to go into the activations. We just did normal act normal activators and other activators. Now we're going to go to activations, the things you can activate with your activators. Next, so we're going to start with the note block. Now, normally the note block is when you right-click on it, it makes a noise, and then it goes makes a different noise slowly. Then, so it goes through like a whole circle. Now, depending on what the block on it is, it changes. So this is like a normal wool block. That's like normal. But let's say, for example, it's on a hay bale. It makes a banjo sound. Okay. Now, the way you can connect this to redstone is if you turn it on, it makes a noise. But you see, it's doing the same note every time. And you could change the note by Boom. clicking it. So now it's that one. Let's do the next one. So that's how note blocks work with uh, redstone. Next, we're going to talk about the redstone lamp. Now, you probably saw the redstone lamp earlier with the lightning and the other things. But basically, a redstone lamp is just a it's just light. So when it turns on, it's on. And then when it turns off, it's off. Now, you could use this with, the, for example, the, the solar panel uh, to, to turn on a light only when it's nighttime. So then it's bright around, just how the street lamps work. So the next one is pistons. Now, I know there is a section called piston and things. But we'll get to that in a minute. This is separate. So pistons, how they work is when you activate them, they push a block. Okay, so it pushes the block forward, and you see it pushes this forward. So depending on which way the piston is facing, then that's the way the block's going to move. Now, similarly, the sticky piston, um, when it moves, 
So it's the same thing as a piston where you turn it on, it pushes forward, turn it back, but th this time it pulls it back. Wow! Sticky piston. Now you can tell how a st sticky piston looks because it's green around here, and meanwhile a piston looks like this, nice and beige. So next we're going to be talking about the dispenser and the dropper. Breaking news, everybody. There have been recent reports on the Dumb Dabs channel that likes are draining and dislikes are gaining. In order to fix that, we need you to go down there to press the like button before it's too late. We must win this like war. Also, there have been recent reports of a brand new Discord server, so go in the card in the top right or left, or go into the description and join the new server. Now, back to your video. Next, we're going to be talking about the dispenser and the dropper. So a dispenser, the way it works, is depends on what's inside. It does a different activity, but it mostly shoots out the thing. So for example, there's arrows inside the dispenser, so it shoots an arrow. In this dispenser, there's just normal blocks, so what it does is it shoots the block forward. Now, if, if th that, that happens when it doesn't have any special activity, but let's say for a water bucket over here, when you activate it, it shoots out water. Usually this will spray out around, but it's in a box. And then when you click it again, it's, it brings back the water. Now, droppers are a little different, where they do the same thing with every item, where they just drop it. Where they just drop it. And now, you see, that was an arrow. And normally, with a dispenser, it would shoot it. But this one, it just dropped it. And, and to see, the thing is, you see, this block went around four blocks away. If we, this one only flew three blocks away, because it drops it. It doesn't go as far as distance. Next, we're going to go over what I like to call the five openers. So when you activate all these levers, they open or close the thing. So for the wooden door, open, close, open, close. Then trap door, open, close, open, close. F fence gate, open, close. Iron door, open, close. Iron trap door, open, close. Now, the only difference with the wooden ones and the iron ones is that the wooden ones you can open normally. You see, boom, 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 boom. But the iron ones you can't open where right clicking. You see, I'm trying, doesn't work. Trying doesn't work. Um, so you could use this for opening doors, like making secret ways or puzzle rooms and things like that where you need to open a door. Next we're going to go over the TNT. Now you probably know about TNT, but when you activate it, it explodes, so let me just show you. So you see it made a pretty big radius. TNT is usually random, you see like it destroyed that one over there, but it didn't destroy this one over there. And it's kind of random, but it usually goes in a, a like circular format most of the time. Next, we're going to go over the other uh, redstones. So, the first other redstone is the repeater. Now, the repeater is probably one of the most unique redstone uh, components. Where So, normally, with the lever, like I said earlier, it has a frequency of 15, which means it could travel 15 blocks before it stops. But a repeater can fix that. So, assuming this redstone line was 15 blocks long, the redstone repeater, if you put it at the end of it, then it adds another 15. So, let's say I turn this on. Let's say this was 15. You see, it travels through. Now, you probably notice when I turn this on, the, the redstone on this side turned on a half a second later after this one. Because a redstone repeater can also delay... Uh, 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 signal. So if you right click it, you see you delay it, and when you turn it on, you see that was a little more noticeable. It was about a second, but then you could go even further. If you do one more, then it's like about a little more than a second. But if you do even more, it's about two seconds. So and then so you could add repeaters after repeaters after repeaters, but then you right click it again to reset it. So then you can make something delay a lot longer. Next, we're going to go over the hoppers. So what hoppers do is they collect items. So for example, if I take the stone block over here and I throw it into the hopper, you see the, hop the stone block disappeared because it went into the hopper. If I right click to check on it, you see it has five slots, but the stone block is in fact inside. And if we go over here to this hopper, and, and so we take the stone block and we throw it inside, if I can make it, <laughs> throw it inside, oh, it's gonna go in the video. Go inside, there we go. Uh, then you see it's not here because you see the ho hopper is actually connected to the chest and you see now it's actually in the chest. Next we're gonna go over the special piston stuff. Now we're going to be talking about slime blocks and honey blocks. So slime blocks and honey blocks go nicely with pistons. Or basically what a slime block and a honey block does, it, uh, it can, it, it, when it push with a piston, it sticks onto uh, other blocks. So you see this is a normal lime green wool block, this one also, and they also stick to other slime blocks. So you see when I push this, 
it goes up. Now, it doesn't stick back with a piston, so you can't use that instead of a sticky piston, but if you do use a sticky piston, you see this is a sticky piston, then you see it goes up, it goes down, and it brings all the blocks with it. Now, why would you have two, uh, a honey block and a slime block to do the same thing, you may ask. Well, you see, honey blocks and slime blocks can attach to every block except each other. You see, it brought up the lime wool block, and, and but it didn't bring up the honey and slime blocks because they don't stick to each other. Now, this isn't just because it's above it. Also, like we see out here, it's, it's to the side and attach it. It's just because honey and slime blocks don't stick to each other. Now, the reason you would want this is because in some redstone contractions, you need two slime block things to be right next to each other. So you could have a honey block as a substitute instead. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. I spent a lot of hours editing and building and recording this video. Like, I'm pretty sure I spent like up to like 8 to 10 hours in total making this video. I spent a lot of time in the past few days making sure this video could get out. Uh, and I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, if you did enjoy it, uh, do everything I said in the video. Subscribe, like, but also uh, go watch one of my other videos. There should have been popped up two on screen right now. Um, and just just click one of them, watch them, because I need 4,000 hours of watch time in order to start getting monetized on YouTube. And so far, I don't. I only have about, like, 10 hours, I think. So it'd be really appreciated if you went and clicked one of those videos. Um, also, make sure you watch until the end of my videos. I'm really appreciative that you made it this far into the video. Uh, I work really hard on this, so I'm glad you could. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking. Anyways, uh, see you in the next video. Bye.